What's up guys, Tugi here, back again. This is the Manhattan Project, and today we begin Season 2. An interesting off-season, a couple of moves that could backfire, potentially. You never know. I mean, it, it's going to be tough. I mean, we stuck with Jimmy VC, Matt Plample, Jesper Faust, over some players that we might not have needed to stick with. So, we'll see. Bottom line, you've seen the lineup at the end of the last episode. You know what the deal is. Let's do this. Let's do this. The Manhattan Project. The Manhattan Project. I'm going to call it... I'm gonna, I, Throughout the course of this series, I promise to at least call it Rebuilding Hockey Town and A Nation United at least twice each. It's going to happen. Which... For Rebuilding Hockey Town, when I've done about 70 episodes of it, it's just kind of ingrained. Like, oh, hey, it's it's Rebuilding Hockey Town. Welcome back. But, yeah, we got to get used to the new name, man. The Manhattan Project. And what a name it is. What a name it is. You know, I, I probably should have sibbed ahead through the preseason at this point. But, yeah. Oh, well. Let's do this, though. Let's do this. What is going to happen this season? That's the question. All I know is I'm a little bit anxious to find out because it is likely it'll be Yager's last season. Or nearly a guarantee it'll be Yager's last season. Likely that it'll be Hank's last season. So we need... We need a little bit of luck. Of course, last year we made the postseason... As the eighth seed, but we went all the way to glory. We made it to the Stanley Cup final. We won the damn thing. Can we do it again, though? Is the question. Can we do it again? And we will find out. Now, we are very early into this new season, of course. But I'll take a 4-0 start. We did start last season incredibly well. Like, incredibly well. And then right around the All-Star break, shortly before and then directly after the All-Star break, we fell off the cliff. Like, I'm talking, <laughs> like, Toronto Maple Leaf level of falling off cliffs. No offense to any Leaf fans, of course. But I'm more talking about, you know, not necessarily talking about 2013. More like the season before and after, where they should have made the playoffs, and then they lost, like, 75 to 80% of their games. Uh, towards the end of the season. I'm more talking, you know, to that extent, basically. But you get the point. I, fine. I should have said Bruins falling off cliff, like Flyers series, okay? I'm sorry. It should have been self-deprecating humor. I'm sorry. But it wasn't. I just keep taking shots at Leafs fans to make myself feel better for the fact that they're going to win a cup before the Bruins will. At least at this rate. At least at this rate. Now, we have made it to the first month. We are in November, and there's the first injury of the season. Yager's out for a little bit over a week, yeah, about a, a week and a half or so, which isn't, yeah, it's not too bad, but still, I'd like to avoid injuries as much as we possibly could this year. As far as, far as who we're calling up, I'm going to call it Megna, I guess. Maybe? Yeah, fuck it, why not? Why not? He's at least the best player available. And that way we can have him in on the fourth line and bump somebody up like uh, Plemple or Faust. So let's just go best lines. And we will figure this out. Who has done better thus far? Seven points. Nino with six. Uh, you know what here? Let's have Nino with Zuccarello and Zabanajab. Yeah, we'll have Kreider, Hayes, and Bushnevich. Maybe, actually, Megna can play center. Hmm. No, you're not here. We'll still go with uh, Bushnevich. Then we'll have Miller. We'll have uh, VZ and Plemple, I guess. And then Nieves, Magna, and Faust. Sure. That works, I guess. <laughs> the bottom six for this team is, we'll, we'll say, inconsistent. Or not exactly ideal. That's probably... The best way to put it. Uh, let's just go best lines for the AHL. And then we have to take out this uh, unfortunate player on this team. Which I say unfortunate because, of course, he's not under contract to us. He's just there for the AHL team. 
And we'll put Lidl or Lidal in the lineup. I am sorry, Palmu, but you will have to sit for the moment. You will have to sit for the moment. And defense, we'll have to take up Brian Strait again. Because we don't really need him in. Oh, actually, if Alex Peters is the alternative, we'll, we'll keep Brian Strait. And then we got to take out one David Riddich for Brandon Halverson. Is it Brandon or Brendan? It's Brandon. There we go. I got it right. Names. I can actually get them right from time to time. So Yager out for a little bit. That's a little bit concerning. What's more concerning is the fact that we've lost three straight games. That's that's not great, is it? <laughs> oh, it's early. It's early. And actually, I am a little bit concerned now because we did have a very good start to the season, and now all of a sudden we're 8-5-1. and one. It's probably going to be worse after this game against Montreal. It's worse in a way because we just lost Mika Zibanejad for pretty much the rest of the month. That's just... Oh, isn't that great? So what I'm going to do is I'll just go best lines now. And I'll put Yager back in. Which isn't great. So Kevin Hayes will be on the top line. I will bump up JT Miller to the second line. Third line. We'll have Nieves there now. And then we'll have uh, Plemple, Magna, and Faust. I guess that works. Sure, why not? As long as Yager doesn't get hurt again. We lost to Montreal, too. Good God. Can we not do this? Like, it's still early in the season. Give me some hope. You waited a while before you crushed my hopes and dreams of making the playoffs until we did, and then we won. But just give me some hope, and we get a waiver claim. Ryan Murphy has one year left on his deal. He honestly might be... I mean, I might as well. Right? Sure, fuck it. I'll take Ryan Murphy and we'll turn him into a 7th round pick or at some point, I guess. Fine by me. Not exactly the ideal pickup, but it's better than nothing. So let's go... Let's go... No, God damn it! Best lines. Thank you. So the defense is kind of ridiculous now, especially if I leave Brian straight in the lineup. Which I... Ah, well, Zaborovsky or... Zaborovsky. Zaborovsky. Bobrovsky. Uh, he stays. Screw it. You know what? We'll just leave the we'll just leave the team the same. And then uh, Loic all out in Albin, all Albin, Albin, Albin. Uh, we're gonna take you out of the lineup again in exchange for Lidl. Lidl. He's back, and we're good. Moving on, and we finally pick up a win. I mean, granted, we had only lost two in a row, but I'm gonna say finally. Because I'm not liking how many L's were there recently. Not uh, not liking it. It's feeling like a UFC matchup against Terrible. Too many L's. Too many L's. Let's let's win some games here. This is our home turf, damn it. And then we immediately lose to Washington. That's that's great. Yeah, that's just that's that's lovely. No, it's cool. And then Hartford loses their starting goalie. Oh my god. Here we go. Last season. I don't recall having to deal with injuries too much. So this season, it's just going to be injury after injury after injury. Halverson will be the starter for the moment. Let's move on. And before then, I guess we'll take care of the scouting. We'll go to the German League. The Germans for a week. Good thing is Zabanajad will be healthy in one week. At least 100%. And that is what's important but yeah like i was saying i don't think we had to deal with too many injuries last year so i guess we're gonna make up for it this year right which feel free we have our rings we have our cup it's all good you can hand us nothing but losses from this point on it's not gonna bother me all that much really uh the question is is zabanajad 100 percent earlier than he should be i don't think he is i didn't see anything at the top of the screen, so we will send to the 28th. He should be 100% now. Yes, he is. Good. So let's go fix the lineups. Lineup management. It's just the best, isn't it? It's just the best. We are in first place in the division. Not by much. Of course, we're only 21 games into it. We have a long way to go. But so far, so good. Kind of. With the exception of the injuries. So, Magna needs to be sent back down. Minnesota, you could really do me a favor here and claim him on waivers. 
That would be nice. Let's see what happens. And nope, he made it. Because of course he made it. Because of course he made it. So we will go best lines. We'll swap Zook and Yager again. Second line is good. Third line, we need to make a couple of changes. And we're good. Beautiful. How is that uh, fourth line? Never mind. I was going to say, how good are they doing? The correct answer is they're not. <laughs> they're just not doing well at all. But I wouldn't expect them to do much better if they had, you know, DeHarnay and Michael Grabner at this rate. It wouldn't be that much better. Shest York ends up to an 81 and has done incredibly well. Holy shit. Picking up where he left off at the KHL level. And Hank, in fairness, is still doing all right himself we will go best lines again i'm gonna have to take this guy out of the lineup every goddamn time which certainly frustrating but we'll do what we have to do and we'll put grop back into the lineup this time out because it actually keeps roberts and askew in the lineup by default so some interesting development there and again we'll just leave brian straight in have Halverson be the starter, and we're good to go. Sweet. Hartford, are you in first place? No, you are not. You're actually not doing that well. Your defense, though, is 84 rated, which is pretty damn good for an AHL level team. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Let's sim to the New Year and see if our fortune changes. You know, or not. More lineup management. That's fine, too. That's what I wanted, actually. It was reverse psychology. What I really wanted was to deal with more lineup management. <laughs> Let's call up Malta Stromwall this time. God damn. All right. Hooray. More lineup management. Let's do this. So, again, we'll swap these two around. It's hilarious that it put Stromwall there. We'll actually put Bushnevich there. Um... Let's have Stromwall. Yeah, we'll actually still have him on the fourth line. It's fine. And who's doing better, Plumple or VC? And we'll still go with Jimmy VC. That's fine. Everything's fine. No problem at all. Best line again. We'll take this guy out of the lineup again. People are probably screaming, turn off injuries. And to that, I say no. It creates drama and unneeded frustration for me. But damn it, it is what it is. Halverson is once again Z starter, and we can we just stop it? Like, can we just not have a pop up on the screen for like three minutes? <laughs> like, just give me a couple of minutes, please, without having to deal with a whole bunch of bullshit. I beg you, we're gonna have to do the scouting right now. Yep, there it is. Lovely, 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 lovely. Check extra liga or whatever the hell it's called. Nino is nearly 100%. Is he back for the Flyers game? He is not. I think he was supposed to be back on the 8th, if I'm not mistaken. Could be thinking of Zabanajad. And I was thinking of Zabanajad being healthy on the 20th. That's how it works. That's how it works. So we are in one hell of a race for that division title at this point. Let's get Nino Niederreiter back into the lineup. How does Dromwall do in his uh, venture on the 4th line? He didn't do shit. Granted, he's on the 4th line. Probably shouldn't expect him to do anything. But you get my point. You get my point. I'm still disappointed. He didn't score 18,000 goals. So I am disappointed. All right. Best lines again. We'll set up this team again. It's like fucking miracle. Again. Again. And again. All right. Uh, Lidl? Or Grop. Nope, it's going to be Grop that gets back into the lineup. And then goaltending Riddich. I fucking hate that we had to acquire you. And you're not even doing that well, really. But we had to get rid. We had to get rid of one Andre Pavlik. Which I can't really say I'm missing him at this point. Because I'm not. You know, I don't want to lie. I try to be honest, right? I try to be, and if I were to say I'm missing Andre Pavlik, I would be lying. He had the series of his life against Ottawa, and then we got rid of him, which was pretty much always the plan, with the exception of the, you know, him having the series of his life deal. I expected him to be completely terrible, much like he was in the regular season 
on the last time out. But hopefully, fingers crossed, I'm probably jinxing it. Hopefully we can make it, uh, hopefully we can, uh, you know, make it a little bit, a little bit, uh, into the season here without injuries. I'm just trying to jinx it and stall. I'm just waiting. Mark stall. I'm uh, just waiting <laughs> for another injury to happen. Thankfully, we get to the scouting first, though. Let's see. I didn't even pay attention to that five-game winning streak we had. Didn't even pay attention. We now have a 21-9-2 record. Not too shabby. The Wolfpack doing pretty well themselves. We lose 6-1 to Detroit because I pointed out our success. How dare I? I am so sorry. I will just continue to call our team shit. It's fine. I'll never say I'll never say anything positive again, EA. It's fine. By the way, happy new year. We've made it. It's 2018. Which, by the way, the fact that we're going to be able to say that uh, in just a few short months scares the ever-loving shit out of me. But anyway, it is January 1st, 2018. Let's take a look at what's going down. And we are neck and neck with the Capitals. But I do wonder, as far as trades go, maybe any signings. Have we missed anything? And no, we have not. Just in general, there's been nothing. Again, I'm not surprised because a lot of teams don't have any space. Although, although, I can go talk to Minnesota right now. Because they're the ones that lost Ryan Murphy. Which means I can send them a nobody that I don't need right now. Which just sounds like a lovely idea. So it's going to be straight Rodine or Megna. I want to take a look at who's doing well, though. 16 points in 31 games for Rodin. Megna has 21 points in 22 games. All right. Holy shit, I couldn't hold that off. <laughs> I couldn't hold that off. It was just meant to be. We're going to have to turn that into an alert on Twitch. It's going to have to be a thing. That was incredible. It kind of hurt a bit, I'll be honest. But yeah. Fuck. Do we keep Brian straight is the question. Do we keep Brian straight and keep that defense stacked? Or or do we end up... Uh, cause let's see, who do we have on defense that's not even playing at the moment? Like Rewind, Gattenby. It would pretty much open up a spot for Gattenby. But I do want Hartford to be great. So that's... Ah, oh God. You know what? Let's get rid of Brian straight. It's fine. It's fine. Fine, they don't have any cap space. I might not be able to make this work, even though he's on a minor league deal. I might have to get rid of somebody else. We will find out. Can we get this deal to work? We should be able to. All right. Can I get a fourth round pick for him, please? No. All right, we'll try for a fifth and a seventh. Or how about it? Yeah, we can still do that. Next year's fifth round pick. Will that go through? No. How about just the fifth next year? Yes. Okay, so there we go. We get rid of Brian straight. Which is good. We clear up a roster spot. And now if somebody else gets sent down on waivers, I guarantee we see Brian Strait on waivers two seconds from now. It's going to happen. But what I want to do as we get Roberts back into the lineup is I want to sign... I want to sign in Albin and Portman. So I can get rid of them both at the end of the year. I'd probably have to sign them to three-year deals and then trade them. But I do want to get rid of both of them so that they're not constantly here screwing up the best lines in the future. So we'll send offers to them before the end of the... Well, definitely before the end of the season. Before the trade deadline, most likely. But what I wanted to do was take a look league-wide at how we we're doing. And we actually have a two game, uh, you know, two games at hand. Over the caps. So that's looking good. How are we doing league-wide? We are currently in fifth. Minnesota back in first place. Without Nino Niederreiter, they are still in first place. There's something about the Minnesota Wild where they are just dominating, with the exception, of course, of when we beat them in the postseason. <laughs> now, 21 points for Matt Zuccarello. Zibanejad's doing all right. Yager's doing okay. But you know what? I'm actually going to swap those two around. We'll see if that can wake him up a bit more. Kreider was leading the team in points. And in fairness, that second line is doing really well. The third line, not too shabby. And then the fourth line, in fairness, not too bad either. 
things are looking pretty damn good for this team. With the exception that Berigalazov might be struggling a bit. So you know what? I'm actually going to take a risk and we're going to put Holden with Shea. Brady Shea is up to an 88 overall, which is pretty damn crazy. But let's move forward a little bit more. Let's just keep going. I don't know if we'll sim the entire season in this episode. We'll find out. I mean, if there's no controversy throughout the entire season, why bother? The only bit of controversy with this has been injuries. And I'm not going to say that we haven't had to deal with it in a while because I don't want to jinx it. Right? EA, please? <laughs> Okay, and instead you just hand me two straight losses, it's fine. But hey, we got one point. One pity point is better than nothing, damn it. It is. So there we go. We're in, we're in the States for two weeks. We're back home. USA. USA. I need to watch Miracle tonight now after bringing that up. Damn it. It's been a while since I've watched that movie. Great fucking movie. Love that movie. <laughs> Could have just said great movie, but no, that, that's more funny. Just, ah, great fucking movie. Because it really is. So right now we are back to kind of trading wins and losses. Not the end of the world. Uh, Georgiev, I believe as it's pronounced. Again, probably butchering it. Is just about 100%, which is good. We'll see if that's actually the case before we sim this next game for the Wolf Pack. Because we don't need him losing morale. And I think we're still good. I'm not sure when he was supposed to be 100%. We will find out, is he back? Now he's back. Perfect. So let's uh, make him the starter yet again. And holy shit, the... <laughs> oh, the Caps. Boy, they are pissed that we eliminated them last year, aren't they? My God. Ovechkin is determined to get the job done this year. And they are damn well determined to win the division. My God. Well... That could be a bit of an issue. Now, why is Graves... Oh, he's minor league top two. Oh, they're all minor league top two, except for Ryan Murphy. So I could understand why he's complaining about ice time a little bit. I could. You know what, here, we'll swap you and Pedri, because honestly, Pedri is already 24 years old, and we probably could have traded him. Uh, aside from that, we are good to go. We are good to go, and again, shortly before... The trade deadline is when I'll try to send an offer uh, for those two, you know, non-roster AHL players, as I'll call them. At least they're not on our roster. Uh, in the meantime, I am waiting to see if I get a waiver offer again. Because getting Ryan Murphy's nice. I mean, we'll probably re-sign him. I might, the, the problem with trying to trade him is, again, everyone is full. For, why is Nino complaining about ice time? You're a second-line guy. Unless he went up. We'll find out. I'll actually double check here in a minute as we are at the All-Star break. And Graves is still complaining about ice time. Lovely. So maybe I should actually take a look at the team really, really quickly. We shall find out. Man, this division is still ridiculously close. But let's find out. Jasper Faust isn't happy. Well, I'm glad we noticed. And now it's finally gotten to the point where he is just pissed off. You have penalty kill time, though. What's the... Ma no, you don't. It put Nieves there instead. I can understand while you're pissed. Uh, Jesper, I forgive you. I forgive you. I can understand why you're angry. Don't worry about it. Uh, is Nino a first-line guy now? No, he's still a second-line guy. So what the hell are you complaining about? What the hell are you complaining about? Here, we'll put you on the top pairing, top power play, whatever. God damn it, Nino. Don't be complaining. We need you to man up. Don't complain. Just power through. There's a chance that we could be successful again this season. If you just shut your face, focus on winning hockey games. No need for an ego. I'm really pissed that Graves is still complaining, but we will put him with Murphy. And we'll have uh, Butcher and Peon. That works too. Goaltending is still fine. And we will move forward. Again, I'm hoping for a waiver claim. Although... At this point, I mean, have there been any other trades? I don't think there have been. Please? Uh, nope, just the Brian Strait deal. Great. So we are pretty much stuck with the players we have. We do have a lot of guys on the team, you know, NHL or, or mainly AHL level, that we don't need at this point. But it is what it is. 
It is what it is. Let's go ahead. Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. Season 2. We're making some pretty damn quick progress. Now, I am nervous because we lost some games before the All-Star break. Thankfully, we won our first one after the All-Star break. Our first two, in fact. And then we lost 6 nothing. Great. Great, 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 great. Uh, states we already have scouted out. So, let's scout the queue for three weeks. Damn. Scout the queue for three weeks. And there's the two straight losses. Let's not collapse, please. We need to be winning games. Oh, God. Here we go. We cannot afford to drop games this year because we're not in first place this time out. Last time, we were in first place. This time, we're not. That's a problem. We can't afford to be losing too many games. So please get your shit together. Because I don't know if we're going to be good enough to actually get the 8th seed spot. We are losing too many games. Oh, God. All right, we at least beat Florida. Okay, can I... I'll, I'll sim to the 28th. I'll sim our last two games. Holy hell, let's, let's not... Let's not do this. I'll take the pity point over Ottawa. That's fine. Can we beat New Jersey, please? Division rival? Yes, we can. Okay. Well, uh, for the second straight year, February was not very kind to us at all, which is a damn shame <laughs> and somewhat scary, but we are still in a half-decent spot. Where are we, though, in the stand? We are out of the playoff structure, so about... About my previous statement of saying we're in a decent spot. Um, yeah, I don't know if we're in a decent spot after all. We are in a pretty damn rough spot. John Moore ended up being on uh, waivers claimed by Vancouver. Have there been any trades? Michael Neuverth for David DeHarnay. <laughs> and Josh Bailey and Jason Chimera off the Tampa for Jan Walcott and Otto Sompi. Interesting. David DeHarnay back in the division. How do you like that? I don't. He'll score 18,000 goals. So, allow me to... Who the fuck? I know in Albin. Who the hell was the other guy? Who the hell was the other guy down in the AHL that I cannot think of? And then I'm also going to see if I can somehow get a deal to work. Jesper Faust is still really pissed off. <laughs> the penalty kill time didn't help. It just didn't help. So that's not good, is it? That is... That is not helpful. Damn it. That's... Oh, God, Jesper, you're killing me here. Like, what's the issue? You have top-line PK time? Like, come on. Think of the team. You're being selfish. You are. You are being selfish, and I don't appreciate it at all. Damn it. Okay, so hold on. Who are the two players? i got to think of that first. Uh, Portman and In Albin. I need to sign those two. And you know what? Shit, I could really make it easier on myself if I would just pay attention. Didn't mean to go to roster moves. That's okay. That's okay. Who do we have here? So, oh, that's right. They're not going to show up until I go to edit lines. Lovely. No, I don't want to call up Lidl. Oh, what a disaster. I blame Jesper Faust for all of my uh, my stress at the moment. So, and Albin's a center, Portman's a left wing. That's what I had to look up. Let's see if I can sign both of them. If I can, it'll make things much easier down the road. Although, in Albin is the top priority. But, let's find out. We go to centers. We go to centres. And let's find in Alban. Damn. That's fine. Not that I want to sign him, but you got to do these things. You got to do these things. There he is. I'm going to have to sign him to a three year deal, which really sucks. But that's fine. And left wings, we need to find Portman. Good old Portman. Where are you, buddy? We got to sign you so that we can get rid of you. As soon as possible. There you are. I just looked right past you twice. There we go. All right, we got those two offers out. Can I trade anybody? Including Jesper Foss. I might, I might just have to get rid of him here. 
which isn't ideal, but if he's not going to be happy with that PK time, then he has to go. Flat out, he has to go. Now, it would be ideal to find somebody in here. You know what? Before we do that, let me see. Are there any teams that I can uh, go one for one for? And let's just say for the hell of it, Pedri's good. But again, he's not probably not going to get that much better. At least not good enough to steal an NHL spot away from anybody. So let's see if we can get rid of him. Let's see if we can get rid of him. Is there anybody that has a contract spot? Fifth round pick? No. Anybody, please. What sucks is occasionally there are... You know, teams with like 50 contracts that can magically take another contract. It's, oh, it's bullshit. Minnesota, there's no way. Yeah, pretty much. New Jersey, can you save me? Holy shit, New Jersey, you're lifesavers. You are lifesavers. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. The second round pick is going to be too much, but I am still going to try and get it. I am still going to try and get it. Now, actually, because I can look to make this deal with New Jersey, do they have a fourth liner that would fit the team? That is my question. Do they have a fourth liner that would fit the team? They should. They're New Jersey. They don't really have that great a player. Brian Boyle would be fucking perfect. Good God. So they have Quinville. They have Quinville decent defensively, for sure. Uh, Miles Wood, decent defensively, a physical player. Nick Lappin's not awful. Brian Boyle is perfect. He is perfect. And he won't complain. Uh, Nosen and Rooney won't be too bad either. But I think Brian Boyle's the perfect guy. We could go for Rooney. No, let's go for Brian Boyle. I didn't even see his value. But he is the guy. Again, it sucks to have to trade within the division here. But it's just a team that we can actually get a deal done for. So, uh, Pedri... Fast for a second and Boyle. That looks about even. And to be honest, I'd be okay with it. They're not, though. Good thing is, of course, we already have plenty of draft picks to make this work. So how about a fourth from Nashville? Because who gives a shit? No. All right. Well, how about a fifth from Tampa? Because we don't need it either. Still no close to fair value, though. You know what? I'll just go two fourth round picks. It's fine. Uh, here. Have our fourth round pick as well. Will that go through? Nope. You sons of bitches. You could have accepted it. You know you could have. Seventh round pick from Nashville. So Pedri, Fost, two fourths and a seventh for a second round pick next year. And Brian Boyle, there you have it. Jesper, I tried. I had patience with you. I tried to rectify the situation by giving you PK time. And you just had to be a bastard about it. So you... You, sir, are gone. I am happy to say that you, sir, are gone. However, however, the good news is Brian Boyle is back with the New York Rangers. And again, Pedri, we could afford to get rid of him. And that way some other... Um, it, it does suck to get rid of Pedri and to get rid of Brian Strait because it does affect the defense for the Hartford Wolfpack. But... Then again, now we do get certain players getting a bit more proper ice time. That'll help them out quite a bit. But Brian Boyle is here. We get another half-decent pick. We have quite a few second-round picks heading into next season now as well. So let's go best lines. Uh, good thing is that... Uh, actually, here, let's swap Zuccarello and Yager. And now... Now, now, now... The question is, I mean... Nieves is still a depth guy. We'll still have Quimple there, too. That's fine. So we'll have, uh, yeah, we'll have BC with, how's BC doing? You know what? In fairness, he's doing all right. That third line is still doing well. The fourth line, Nieves is still doing well, too. So that's looking good. The team is looking good, and it's funny. Best lines now puts D'Angelo with Brady Shea. So we will actually not do that, though. I still want Holden to be there for now. Actually, I don't even know how that pairing's doing. That pairing's not doing great. Never mind. Never mind. Here, we'll, we'll do it that way. It's fine. EA, have it your way. Have it your way. And then down in the AHL, 
Uh, we'll wait to hear back from In Albin and the other guy, especially now that we cleared out that contract spot. And I'll actually double check to see if there's another guy I can manage to get rid of. And then In Albin and whatever the hell the guy's name is, we'll be able to get rid of those two at the draft. At least that is my hope based on retired players. There is no other deal we can make, though, so let's move forward. The team is pretty much set in stone. Jasper Faust, unfortunately gone. He just wouldn't play the game. That was my concern. Obviously, last season, he and VZ weren't happy on the fourth line. I was hoping with the PK time, Faust would be happy. He wasn't. Portman and in Albin both accept, which is great news for me. Uh, now that I can get rid of them whenever the hell I want, mainly at the next draft. So it's perfect. It's perfect. Now it's just a matter of can we string some wins together? And that's not, uh, oh, that's not looking good. Those pity points are nice, but this Western road trip is killing us. All right, that works. I guess we can end it on a good note. Actually, no, wait, we got to play Winnipeg on the road too. Can we please beat the Jets? No, we lost eight to three. Lovely. Lovely. There is a very real chance that we're going to miss the playoffs after requiring Nino Niederreiter for a first and a third. We are currently in a playoff spot, which is great, but we are 12 points back of the Caps. We aren't getting anywhere close. We're getting nowhere close to that division title this year. So that top line is actually struggling more than I was hoping they would be. The problem is our second line is doing incredibly well, particularly Nino filling in for, you know, basically what Rick Nash was doing last year. But I am concerned about that top line and their productiveness. Very much concerned, but I don't want to make too many changes because I'm not sure what that change would be. It would probably be putting, eh, well, actually, now that I think about it, now that I think about it, let's try it. Let's drop Yager down to the second line with Kreider and Hayes. Because desperate times do call for desperate measures. How's that second pairing doing now? Still not great. Holden and Barakalazov are recovering, though. But actually, here, let's drop D'Angelo. Damn. How's the goaltending? Shishjorkin? Nah. And Hank, in fairness, hasn't been great. In fairness, Hank hasn't been great. Which is tremendously disappointing. Tremendously disappointing. But we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes, and we will put Roberts back into the lineup. And actually, since I went best lines down in the AHL, let me check the defense. Defense is good. Players should be getting a bit more accurate ice time now. And we need to take out Riddich again. Need to drop him in favor of Halverson. So let's see. Let's see. Oh boy, this is going to be right down to the wire, isn't it? Again, just a great start to the season. And we start to fall off midway right around the All-Star break. We split games with the Home and Home series with Nash and the Blue Jackets. Can we beat the Blackhawks, please? Yes, we can. A nice 3-0 shutout. The Wolfpack, in fairness, doing well. Should give them credit because we might have to pay a lot of attention to them moving forward. I certainly hope not, but it could very well be the case. <sighs> End of March. We need, we need a good run here in these final six games before we hit April. We need a good run, and that is... Not what I had in mind. That is not what I had in mind. Being outscored 11-2 to over two games. Three straight losses. Boy, we just don't want to make the playoffs, do we? We just don't want to make the playoffs, do we? Can we please beat Pittsburgh? We have to beat the Islanders. We lost to the Penguins. God damn it. Oh, boy. We are in a bit of trouble. We have five games left this season. And we are in a lot of trouble because we just dropped games to those in our division. We are currently in a playoff spot. Oh, God. Oh, God. Wow, our leading scorer only has 48 points. You think that might have something to do with it? Holy shit. So the Caps are on 105 points. We're currently on 84. The good thing is we do have a game in hand on the Islanders who are a point back. And we are tied with the Devils 
in games play, but we are three points ahead. So we're looking okay, but again, we are battling for wild card spots, which means we have to pay attention to the Atlantic. And Montreal is right there on 83 points, and they could very well steal a spot from us, although granted they have played two more games. It's coming down to the wire. Ah, I just I, our offense is incredibly frustrating. 48 points for Zabanajad. Not good enough. 46 for Zuccarello. Not good enough. Matt Zuccarello last year had 69 points. Career high. Look at what he's done this year. He scored more goals, but assist-wise? Fucking damn it, man. 45 points for Nino. Yager way down at 31 points. Like, what happened? The dynamic duo last year that led us to the cup was Yager and Zuccarello. And he just hasn't had it this year. It's been an incredibly disappointing year offensively for a lot of members of this team. So, we might have to look because we, we have to win out here pretty much. Like, obviously, we can afford to drop a game or two, maybe even three, but we need results here. Or there is a very strong chance that we could miss the postseason. So I need to go with the with the lines here that I feel give me and give us the best chance to win. <laughs> Which, it's not easy to say what that's going to be. Unfortunately, that does mean taking a risk here. The fourth line is going to be Plempel, Nieves, and Pavel Bushnevich. The third line... It's going to hopefully be somewhat of a shutdown line with Miller, Boyle, and Jimmy VC. The second line is an interesting one. Who's done better at center, first of all? Hayes, 9-32. and 32. Zibanejad is our leading scorer, at least. And then we know that Yager is struggling. You know what we're going to do, though? You know what we're going to do? We're going to go Kreider, Zabanajad, Zuccarello. We're going to have Yager with Hayes and Niederreiter. I feel confident in that lineup. It does. I mean, the fourth line should still be able to contribute, you would hope. I really hate having Bushnevich down on the fourth line. And to be honest, I'm going to check my power play and PK units here, too, in a minute. The problem really is Brady Shea, like, here's the thing. He doesn't have that true second-pairing defenseman to play with. That's probably the one thing that we're missing at this point. Although Berigolazov and D'Angelo are getting better. But it's still inexcusable for him to be a minus 15. It really is. And that pairing with he and Berigolazov just hasn't worked. It hasn't. So what we're going to do, although that top pairing is great, what we're going to do is we're going to take a risk. We're going to have Shea with Shattenkirk. We're going to have McDonough with D'Angelo. And actually, you know what? Here, we're going to have Holden with McDonough. And then we'll have Berigolazov with D'Angelo. The power play is still looking all right. I can tell you Flat out, I'm going to, God, who am I going to switch out here? So I have to switch out somebody. I'm going to take D'Angelo out. Let's take out D'Angelo. Let's put in Bushnevich. And for this, let's go with Shattenkirk here. Have McDonough there with Yager. And we'll have Bushnevich on the second pairing. You know what? That works. That works. And then the PK should still be half decent. You would think at least. Maybe. <laughs> Let's take a look. It's Zabanajad, Boyle, Miller, and Vizi. You would think that would do well. You would think. You would think. So you know what? We will roll with that. And we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. It's 
take a look. Recent individual performance. Yeah, you don't say, Yogs. You don't say. And then, of course, the goaltending. I mean, Hank is obviously the guy, but a 9-12 save percentage. The goaltending hasn't been great at all, but he has a chance to step up here, and I do want to double-check if the power... You know, at this point, it doesn't matter if the power play and the PK units weren't the issue. We've already changed them. Five games, and we need to win the majority. Let's see what happens. We played Detroit in that first game. They're a losing or a losing record team, I should say, and we beat them 7-4. to four. We gave up four goals against a bad team, so that's a pretty rough way to go. We play the Blues. 42 wins this season. This is going to be a rough game. Our last game against the Western Conference opponent. We get the huge 2-1 victory. And now we play Columbus. 41 wins. We are directly battling them for a playoff spot. And a win here could seal it if it hasn't sealed it already. Against Rick Nash in the Jackets, we lose 6-2. to two. We have two games left. The question is, are we a playoff team already at this point? And we are in the second wildcard spot. That loss to Columbus hurt badly. Despite, despite winning those two prior games, that loss hurts badly. We are three points back. We are only one point clear of the Islanders in this wild card spot. And the Sens, uh, well, not the, uh, the Sens are there, but the Habs are two points back. We need to win. We need to win, and particularly this game against the Islanders is a fucking playoff game. It really is. Tampa's not that great for whatever reason. This is a playoff game. We have to beat the Islanders, or there is a very strong chance of us missing the postseason, which would kind of be a disaster. So let's do this. We're, it's pretty much a playoff game. We're going to treat it as a playoff game. Let's go. We have to win. This is as must win as it gets, other than like a game seven in the playoffs. First period. Goal apiece, Yager. Yager's on the board. Casey Sezikis ties it, though, which is pretty disappointing. Second period, please. And again, it's a goal apiece. John Tavares and Matt Zuccarello. Fucking Tavares. Damn it. 26 shots to 22. Two goals apiece. Third period, we need to win. We get the early power play chance. We do nothing win it. with it. The Islanders get a chance of their own. That is killed off as well. Oh my god, halfway through the third, we have to win. We have to win. An overtime loss wouldn't hurt as long as we beat Tampa, but please just get to overtime at this rate. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh my god, we're going to overtime. We are going to overtime. And you know what? I want to see this happen. I want to see this happen. Let's go. In Brooklyn, we need a win, and damn it, I want to see it happen. I want to be watching as we win this game. We're going to win this game, damn it. And then we will beat Tampa. We will beat Tampa. Oh, my God. And then we're going to the playoffs. Oh, God. Right. We have to win this game. We have to win. Let's go. Overtime three on three, of course. Come on. Good face-off win. McDonough and Shattenkirk on a pairing together. I'm fine with that. Zabanajad, who scored big goals for us in the past. He scored the cup-winning goal last time out. We need him to get the job done again. Shattenkirk, what can you do? He finds Ryan McDonough. McDonough being chased by Boychuk. Zabanajad for Ryan McDonough for Shattenkirk. <laughs> And a huge save by Thomas Grice. I thought we had it there. I didn't think McDonough needed to pass. I thought he was going to shoot himself, but not, well, not shoot himself. I thought he was going to take the shot, is what I'm saying. Kevin Hayes, fresh legs on the ice. Let's go. Come on, face off against Tavares. What can he do? Hayes can't get the win. Chasing down boy Chuck, though. Breakout pass for Tavares. He's alone. But he's dangerous. Defenseman running into one another. John Tavares shot. May have been off the post. Perhaps the side of the net. Baragalazov for Kevin Hayes. What can he do? 
Hay is through the legs. Can he find the pass? He can't, but he is hooked by Boychuk. And we have the power play here in overtime. Come on now. Yager and Hayes are out there. Let's go. Biggest game of the season. Hayes wins the draw. Shea for D'Angelo. The shot is blocked by Ryan Pulak. And cleared. Let's go. Come on. We need the goal. D'Angelo recovers. Pass for Kevin Hayes. Through the neutral zone. Finds Yermir Yager. What a time it would be for him to score. Puck goes to Hayes. D'Angelo the shot. Wide. Sezik is trying to clear. Having trouble. Yager. Finds the puck. Cross for Shea. The shot is stopped by Grice. Shea for Hayes. He has space. Back for Shea. The shot. And another save by Grice. Another shot for Shea. He is denied. We're having trouble elevating the puck. Like all of these shots are low. D'Angelo with the chance. He's alone. <laughs> he can't bury it. My God. It's like facing Dubnik all over again. Damn it. We need this win. Let's go. We still have a lot of time to go on the power play. Not if you miss that pass, though. Not if you miss that pass. Big hit from Kevin Hayes. Let's go. Come on, Kevin. Tries to go to Yager. Turns it over. Kuhleman for Pulak. And he clears. We'll go for the line change. Come on now. We need this win. Brady Shea recovers. Pass over. I think that's for Zuccarello. No, it's Zabanajad. Couldn't see the number. Zabanajad misses the pass. We are falling apart on this power play. 36 seconds to go. Come on now. Come on now. We need this win. Mika Zabanajad. He scored those big goals for us in the past. Pass over for Zuccarello. Why did you toe drag? That's unnecessary. Zook back for McDonough. And McDonough runs into Zabanajad. Holy shit. What a missed opportunity. Ryan McDonough for Mika Zabanajad. Let's go. Come on. We need you here. And it's another turnover. Right to Sezikis. Right to Sezikis. Unreal. Unable to make the most of this power play. Players keep running into one another. Sezikis. Going to win the goddamn Selkie based on this game. Boychuk out of the box for Hickey. Puck turned over for Zabanajad. Trying to find his way to Zuccarello. Mika Zabanajad gets hit off the puck again. Line change. Get off the ice, you two buffoons. I could say worse, but I won't. Jordan Emily still with the Islanders. What do you know? Oh, boy. 2.04 on the clock. Tavares against Cristobal Nieves. Kind of an unfair matchup. Tavares battling. John Tavares. Big save from Hank. Save of the year. D'Angelo carries the puck up ice through the neutral zone over the blue line. Unnecessary windmill. What can he follow it up with? Puck to Nieves. Give and go. Nieves with the chance. The shot deflected. But a glove save from Thomas Grice. My God. We can just not find a way to beat Thomas Grice. 36 saves now at this point. Nieves wins the draw. D'Angelo for Holden. Shot and another. Glove save for Grice. Tell me if you've heard that one in the past few minutes. Let's go. Nelson and Nieves. Nieves wins the draw again. Brady Shea, the chance, the shot. Blocker save from Grice. Shea back in front. Shot blocked. Shea, the turnaround shot. Blocked by Nelson yet again. It's Nieves looking to carry in. He's bumped off the puck. Hickey turns it over. Nelson able to recover. Not much offense for the Islanders. But we're unable to get a goal. Thomas Hickey carries in. Looking for a pass. Turns it over to Baragalazov. Brady Shea looking to carry in. Baragalazov turns it over to Brock Nelson. No, what a make What a fucking play. What a makeup driver. Oh, my God. Please. Final minute. Cross creases stopped. Boy, Chuck's denied. Oh, my God. We need to win this game. This is so stressful. If we miss the playoffs after winning the cup, I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to lose my mind. 45 seconds to go. The Islanders, right as I say they're not getting offense, here they are. Chance here. Johnny Boychuk looking for space. Finds the wide open. Nick Letty. The shot is stopped by Lundqvist. Nelson, the cross crease, doesn't go. 30 seconds left. Boychuk, the chance. Saved by Lundqvist. My God. My God, and we will absolutely be calling our time out here. Right as I call out the Islanders for not getting any offense throughout this entire overtime. 
they just start making these incredible plays. 28 point six to go. We need this win. An overtime loss. If we lose here, at this point, we have to beat Tampa. Savannah Jack through the neutral zone. Over the blue line. Loses the puck. Still battling because Savannah Jack had the shot. He scored the cup winner last season, but he can't bury it there. 12 seconds to go. The Islanders carrying in. Johnny Boychuk again makes the pass to Nicoletti. Tavares' shot is blocked. Five seconds to go. Tavares for the last second chance. Save by Hank at the buzzer. And we are going to a shootout. Game 81 of 82. We have a one point advantage on the Islanders. Win. And we seal our playoff spot, I do believe at least. It'd be more likely. Lose. And we have to beat Tampa. We need this. We need this so badly. Oh, God. It's a shootout. Here we go. Matt Zuccarello's up first. What can he do? Zook, can you find a way to score? Yes, he can. What a move. What a move. Gets him on the backhand fake. Look at the hands from Matt Zuccarello. And we're on the board first. I gotta watch this goal again. That was a beautiful move. Finally finding a way to beat Grice. John Tavares up for the Islanders. And he scores. Speeding Henrik Lundqvist. A great move of his own. What a finish. Since when can the AI finish breakaways like this? Or technically penalty shots for that matter. And we're tied. We are tied. Okay, Tavares, fuck off. Who's up next? Yermir Yager, the legend. Can he find a way to score? Gee, you should have retired. What the fuck was that, Yogs? You should have retired. Oh, my God. Pressure's on. Jordan Eberle, up next for the Islanders. We need a save from Hank. We need a save. Eberle denied. He's denied by Lundqvist. Huge save there. Not a great move from Eberle either, which is crazy. The first attempt for both teams was incredible. Zabanajad is up. Can he find a way to score? No, he can't. Again, going to the backhand. Just, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Huge save from Grice. The pressure is on. Our postseason chances are at risk. Nick Letty can win it for the Islanders. And it's poked away by Hank. It's poked away by Hank. We go to extra innings. We go to the fourth round. Oh my god. Pressure's on. Nino Niederreiter. Nino in a Rangers uniform. What can he do against his former team? He's denied by Grice. Denied. The glove side was open. And he just didn't take the chance. Didn't take the opportunity. Pressure's on. Joshua Hosang with the chance. Saved by Lundqvist. Saved by Lundqvist. All right, that was a huge stop on Hosang. We go to round five. We go to round five. My God, Kevin Hayes, please. I'm begging you. Backhand attempt again is denied by Grice. And the pressure is still on. Unbelievable. Anders Lee steps up with the chance to end it here in round five. And another save by Hank. Another huge save by Lundqvist. Blocker side. Who's up next for the Rangers? Round six. Who's it going to be? It's Cristobal Nieves, the rookie. And he's denied. He didn't get the shot off clean. He didn't get the shot off clean. Chance again for the Islanders to end it here in the sixth round. Who is it going to be? Will it be Anthony Beauvillier? The chance, and he scores in the sixth round. Anthony Beauvillier scores. And the Rangers and Islanders are tied on points heading into the final game of the season.
a disaster for the Rangers as Grice steals it with the first star of the game. And the defending Stanley Cup champions are on the verge of missing the postseason. Wow. I'm glad Hank's happy about his ice time. As it stands, we are currently outside of the playoff structure because the Islanders now own the tiebreaker over us. Damn it. And as it stands, the Islanders, I mean, they haven't clinched the playoff spot. Three more regulation plus overtime wins. Two more wins outright. The only way, the only way we make the playoffs as it stands, the only way is if we beat the Lightning, who are currently on 76 points this year and not making the playoffs. The only way we make it is if we beat the Lightning and the Islanders lose. That is the only way that we make the postseason. And guys, I have to tell you, the only way to make this situation more dramatic is if I tell you that this episode's over. And next episode will either be our first round playoff matchup or it will be a draft episode. And you're not going to find out until the very beginning of next episode. So, for those of you joining me live on Twitch, stick around. But for those watching on YouTube after the fact, I'm sorry for the for essentially the blue balls here. I apologize. <laughs> but damn it, it's only it can only be that much more dramatic given these circumstances. For those of you watching on YouTube, though, you know what you have to do to support the video and the channel. And feel free to do that if you haven't already. Until next time, guys, this has been the Manhattan Project. Will we make the postseason or will the defending cup champions uh, be a lottery team? <laughs> we'll find out next time. I'll catch you then.